Hi all, and welcome back to Money Manager's A User's Guide. I'm Nathan Peters. Today, I thought we'd respond to a viewer comment. RS states, in the spirit of suggesting a fund to view, I would suggest RIT Capital Partners, listed in London under the ticker RCT, famously the ex-Rothschild family fund originally managed by Lord Rothschild himself, with strikingly high fees, 4% depending on your performance, a large exposure to private equity unlisted and listed as an investment trust closed ended fund, which allows real retail individual investors to access this asset class and 30 years plus ongoing in its current form. Curious to hear your thoughts. Well, thank you, RS. Always appreciate engaged viewers. As you rightly state, RIT Capital Partners is a stalwart of the UK listed trust space and it can trace its lineage to Baron Rothschild, the 18th century British nobleman who famously exhorted investors to, quote, buy when there's blood in the streets, even if the blood is your own. Although I've not spent a lot of time looking at the listed trust space, mostly because institutions tend to invest directly in open-ended funds at NAV, I've had the privilege of meeting with various Rothschild entities in the UK and Europe. And one thing they all certainly have is the air of centuries-long track records and old-school values of integrity, propriety, etc. But how do they stack up versus others and the market? Well, let's start with the available track in base currency GBP. My data shows 10.5% compounded annual returns over the 23 years of the full factor return library I'm using. It would be more if we went back to inception. You've made over eight times your money with Rothschild since the return of the century versus just three and a half times in equities. Volatility is relatively high, over 20% versus the MSCI World Equity Index at 16%. But interestingly, two thirds of the volatility is generated by their off benchmark activities. Only one third of total risk comes from equity risk. This is a very high active ratio and speaks to the inclusion of private equity, venture capital, hedge funds, and even variable leverage hedging at the trust level. So the moment of truth comes next. I won't keep you waiting. Do they make money from their active bets? Yes, yes they do. About 5% per annum, judging by Venn's multi-factor lasso regression methodology. And that's after fees that can reach over 4%, depending on performance in any given fiscal year. So, taking rough numbers, half of the gross excess return over and above returns from equity risk is paid out to J. Rothschild Capital Management Limited and the underlying third-party managers they've selected. To be fair, most of this is variable with Jay Rothschild taking only 66 basis points and the underlying managers taking 89 basis points in management fees. Now half is a bit higher than institutional investors want to pay for alpha. They typically target a one third finder's fee to the manager and aim to keep two thirds. But this is still an admirable result, result over a very long time. Alpha is by definition non-replicable return and everyone I know would love to tithe 50p for every pound of mana from heaven. So how has Rothschild done this and is it su sustainable? Well, this is where we move away from the quant analysis and get into qualitative assessments. Taking a look at their latest financial statements dated June 2021, we see a myriad of third party and private investments, including a huge windfall when private holding coupon went public last year. It is listed as the largest listed holding now at 9% as well as good contributions from hedge funds. Now that category is really interesting as half of their six hedge funds are Chinese, a much higher percentage than the typical hedge fund portfolio. They do put a lot of well-known hedge funds in their 20% absolute return and credit bucket as well though. The ones I know personally are high quality and it looks like they are active allocators in the space. Holding long time winners like Elliott and Caxton while backing well-regarded startups as well. From a cursory glance, these guys know what they're doing, and they combine the venture capital and private equity alongside hedge funds in a total portfolio approach. Not an easy task and difficult to find replicated elsewhere. The only quibble I would have with RIT's approach is um, it would be their 23% allocation to long only active funds, which look like legacy relationships. They probably don't add enough value to justify the excess fees. And I wonder if their direct private investments at a 9% allocation really compete effectively with their VC fund holdings. It would be interesting to compare IRRs there. 
But that's by the by. Bottom line, RS, the retail investor could do a lot worse than aligning themselves with the Rothschilds. Just know that the last time we had an extended bear market in 2008, returns from both equity risk and alpha risk went negative. But like the Baron, if you bought in again, then you were well rewarded. That's all today from me. If you found this content useful, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And remember, use your money managers. Don't let them use you. Thanks.